Hey guys, become your strength, release your limitless potential. Welcome to another self-help story video. In today's video, I'm once again taking some advice from a self-help book. I'm turning it into a story and through that story I'm gonna tell you, you'll hopefully get some, some advice that will help you to release your limitless potential. Uh, today's self-help book is The Human Magnet Syndrome by Rick Ross. No, Rick Ross. Uh, Ross Rosenberg. Rick Ross is a musician, rapper, I think. Um, anyways, this is a book about uh, dysfunctional relationships. And believe me, there are so many dysfunctional relationships out there. Relationships where uh, b between two people that don't know how to love themselves. They've had a very rough, rough past, childhood, and they never actually learned how to love themselves. And then these people get into a relationship and all kinds of crazy shit starts to happen, okay? But it's an amazing book that will help you if you are in a relationship or if you just simply want to learn more about stuff like this. Um, so yeah. Let's get into our example, our story. Okay, so these are two different part, four different partners, <laughs> two relationships, a relationship between Tom, Lisa, Rick, and Amanda. And uh, they got together, they experienced this amazing trance of a, of a love, you know, this, this type of love that you experience in the start, where you, uh, in, in the book, Rick actually talks about limerence. That is what he, t that is what he, uh, he um, describes it as a type of limerence, feelings that just burst through your body. You feel like you're floating on, on, uh, on clouds. You know, that is the the feeling of love that you experience in the start of a relationship. These people are in their, let's say, the mid their mid twenties, and they just they've just fallen in, in love. And. 10 years into the future, they're still together. They've gotten a, a family, Tom and Lisa get one small, young, uh, taller. Rick and Amanda have um, two kids. One of them is five, another one is seven. And uh, you know, they're, they're getting on with, with their lives. They both have stable jobs, they, they have the the life that they wanted, or at least that's what they believed in the start. Tom and Lisa have an amazing relationship. They're both open to each other. They share their thoughts, they share their feelings, they listen to each other, they express themselves freely, and they grow together, okay? People are always gonna change, but some people stay together and they actually manage to grow together and form uh, a very concrete and very stable type of love relationship. Now Rick and Amanda unfortunately didn't experience this and uh, they actually got into, um, although they felt like they had a really amazing relationship in the start, it, de it developed into something much worse. It developed into a dysfunctional relationship. Um, and you might wonder, well, these two couples are almost the same, right? No, they're actually not. What often determines how your future relationships will be like is your past. It's your luggage. It's what you bring with you, right? So for Rick and Amanda, what they experienced as children 
would impact the relationship that they would have together. So Rick is what they call a narcissist. Let's call him a narc, just just for the for the fun of it, okay? And Amanda is a is a codependent. Codep. Let's call her Codep. Narcissist codependent. A narcissist is a person who who needs respect, acceptance. He needs uh, is a person who needs someone that can listen to their problems and accept them for um, for who they're trying to be. Okay, so Rick, when he was much younger, his parents gave him conditional love. What this means is that his parents didn't love him for who he actually was, you know? So they put up barriers. They put up this, they put out this image. They sent out signals to Rick about how he should be the perfect kid. If Rick is doing this and this and this and this, we will love him, <laughs> you know? That is what a lot of parents do to their children and it's really making things bad. Of course, it's it's one thing being strict to your kid, raising your kid to be a, a good grown-up, but being, but trying to make that kid into a specific type of person isn't really that good. And uh, in addition to this scenario, Rick also experienced some really big hardships with with his dad, his dad usually um, in his very early years of his life, when he was like three, four, five, six or seven years old, he was physically abused by his dad. He would be become very violent him with him. He didn't hit him. He didn't like physically hit him and stuff like, like that, but he would become very harsh with him, right? Uh, and he ended up becoming a narcissist. He ended up uh, disassociating himself with those horrible, horrible feelings, those horrible scenarios that he grew up with. He put those thoughts, those feelings into a, a container in his mind and he locked it up, right? And um, he never actually managed, managed to love himself because his parents never managed to love him, right? Narcissists typically also, they, they, they don't know how to, to emphasize with other people. They have no, they might have, but they don't, usually they don't have that much of an interest in the other person. They're so uh, soaked up into their own personality, their own needs, their own grandiose, that they don't pay that much attention to the other person, which is, a codependent in most in most cases so the codependent almost Amanda has almost the same story as Rick she grew up with parents who put up barriers you have to be this and this and this and this Rick actually never managed to to um, to get into some of these criteria. he never actually received any type of love at all, you know, not some, not any type of substantial love at least. But Amanda actually managed to to get some of these bars down. She actually managed to become the perfect kid to a certain degree. Okay, so so re she received love, and she learned that ah, oh, okay, so if I manage to put myself into this position, if I manage to become this person, if I manage to please the other person, then I am worthy of love. Okay, so that is what the codependent is doing. The codependent is a, is a people's pleaser. It is a person who seeks to fulfill other people's needs and that is the perfect match for the narcissist who needs to 
to like um, to um, to really express himself to to uh, be shown to prove to other people that he or she is worthy of love right so what we're seeing here in this in this dysfunctional relationship is that after the period of limerence of of love that lasted for say maybe a couple of weeks maybe some months maybe even half a year or something this period eventually ends and for some couples for for couples who had uh, for people who grew up with emotionally healthy parents for people who grew up with parents who loved them unconditionally they develop their love to become stronger and even bigger heart is erupting Ta -da! <laughs> uh, but for for people who um, who were raised with with parents that were among emotionally unhealthy with this dysfunctional relationship themselves they also grow up shaping and forming dysfunctional relationships so they they try to seek love both of them try to to seek love together but it's it's not really a good relationship it's a relationship where this person is consumed by taking control of the emotions of this person and and this person is trying to to uh, always um, gain the the affection from the other person so it's a it's a relationship where, where none of the parts actually love themselves and when they don't love themselves they will never they will never ever experience real true love where they can express their feelings freely where they can express their thoughts freely and feel like the other person actually how, how can I put it is is whole okay now uh, if you are a codependent if you see yourself in the people's pleaser role if you had parents that really never actually gave you unconditional love then it's hope for you you can actually go out there and attract people that will love you a hundred percent in return uh, there's a reason why this book is called the the human magnet syndrome and it's because codependents and narcissists oftentimes will they will collide and they will find each other it's like a magnet two magnets that are drawn together um, codependents by reading books like these codependents can actually be aware of what is actually happening around them they can teach themselves to spot a narcissist and they they will eventually be able to get rid of the people in their lives that is th that are drawing their energy out right and codependents can can get rid of their people's pleasing habits they go from being more selfless to be becoming more selfish right it's a good thing to be selfish but you should have a balance between being selfish and selfless right um, so codependents can actually uh, shape a great relationship. They can get into an emotionally stable and healthy relationships. For narcs, for narcissists like Rick, it's a bit different. Um, because narcissists will always, they will always go against you. If you were a narcissist and I was like a, a psychotherapist and I and I tell you that there's something wrong with you, there's something wrong with your relationship with your woman, there's something wrong with uh, your psychology, you as a narcissist will most likely say to me that no, you're the one who's wrong, I'm the one who's right, fuck you. 
I'm going out. I'm, I'm not getting. Uh, I'm not being a part of this. This thing, okay. So that's the sad part about narcissists. They most likely never will see their own issue because they neglect it. So, yeah. Anyways, if you are a codependent or if you have any interest in relationships dynamics at all, then this is a really amazing book. Uh, this was just a quick summary of it all. The basic idea of how codependents and narcissists uh, attract each other and form dysfunctional relationships. Um, yeah, I hope you liked it guys. Please like, share and subscribe if you found this video useful or if you found any of my all the videos useful. <laughs> if you have any questions or requests then feel free to share that down in the comments below and I'll answer you for sure. I also hope that this video got you one step closer towards finding your limitless potential. Uh, stay tuned guys, see you later, bye. Oh, and by the way, I've made a summary of this book. It's a book that I talked about earlier on, The Six Pillars of Self-Esteem. If you want to learn more about this book, gain some more insights into how you can grow and develop your self-esteem, then check out the link below. There'll be a free summary there. Uh, yeah, just a heads up. Thank you so much. Bye.